Okay, we move to the topic of uh, communication. 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 Communication will be in chapter 12 of your new test book. Chapter 12 of your new test book. All right. Uh, Prof. Yes. I noticed that uh, slides we are doing now, the PowerPoints, they not yet uploaded. Am I right? The one we are doing uh, this week. Yeah, this one. For example, communication. No, yeah, I will, and the... no, I will upload that once after the lecture. Okay, now I just wanted to know. Yeah, no, the, the ones uploaded were the last lecture we had. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. No problem. As a, I just yeah. As a, as a follow up. So all the ones we have done previously, leadership. Uh, yeah. All the all the topic we covered last uh, two weeks, they are all uploaded with uh, other additional materials, uh, articles, and the rest. Now I will also upload uh, all the topics we cover today. Uh, okay. And tomorrow, after Sunday, I will upload all the material. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Cook. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I hope every one of you have your test books now. I hope you have all purchased your test books. Colleagues, um, I'm absolutely no. I haven't. You need to purchase a textbook. Except, except NAS has a, uh, except NAS has a lot of it in their library. You can borrow from their library. Uh, but otherwise, it's always good for a student to have the book you used. In fact, uh, if you come to my office, you see that even the books are used in the in the, in the 90s. During my bachelor's and master's, are still with me. They travel with me anywhere I go. Can you see? I import them, I move them from place to place. When I was working at the Central Bank of Nigeria, I moved them to Nigeria. When I started my PhD in South Africa, I moved them to South Africa. When I moved to Johannesburg, I moved them from Cape Town to Johannesburg. They always go with me. Some of them, old books. I still sometimes refer to them. I still sometimes look at them and you know smile, and also get some ideas, you know, from those old books, and use that to support the current ideas, uh, the modern ideas, the contemporary ideas. So always keep your own copy of your library, your shelf. Can you see? Keep your own study. Uh, uh, keep a corner of your of your room no, as a study. Yeah. What did you say? Are you talking to us? I heard somebody was speaking. Are you talking to us? All right. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can you see the slide? Yes. Yes, Prof. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Communication. 
Good progress. The topic we have today, and that will be the last topic for today. Uh, tomorrow we'll continue again. Uh, tomorrow being Sunday, uh, probably we can continue uh, still uh, by eight o'clock if every one of you agrees with that. Uh, continuing by eight o'clock, at least uh, we have been able to get one hour that would, we would have lo uh, lost uh, if we had continued by say uh, nine o'clock, uh, which was uh, our normal time for a weekend. Uh, then uh, we would uh, we would have been able to save two hours, uh, which is of course uh, because if I'm stopping by one, but I will try to stop by one thirty, then it would have been three hours that is a gap. So today now we have been able to catch uh, at least one and a half hours. Uh, then tomorrow we will catch uh, another one hour if we start by eight. Then on the basis of that, we will have only thirty minutes. Uh, to possibly uh, uh, cover. So if we decide to expand a little bit now, additional 30 minutes that is closing by 4.30, uh, definitely we must have been able to cover the hours uh, that we did, we did not cover today uh, because of uh, my conference activities today. All right. Uh, Prof? Yeah. Uh, maybe before you go uh, proceed with a new chapter, I just want to ask um, maybe yourself and the colleagues, if um, in the organization, when it comes to when you talk about um, conflicts management, if there is a, yeah. if there are formal policies or framework or procedures that exist, or is it is this something that um, is more reliant on the leaders or HR? You mean uh, you mean conflict management? Yes, as, as, a, as a policy or a procedure, does it exist? I just say that maybe because in my the background of the business environments where I have I have worked previously, mm. it would just be a discussion or a, a meeting between yourself and the and the leader or yourself and the person who you, whom you want to confront. But in the business organization, can there be something, uh, can, can there be a formal instrument such as policies and procedures or, gu or guidelines for conflict management? Maybe from the colleagues? Yeah, because uh, well, when, when it comes to individual, uh, which is an organization, uh, definitely uh, managing such conflict, uh, for instance, if it is a dispute between an employee and another employee, is the responsibility of a manager. Uh, when it is a conflict between uh, an employee and a manager, uh, probably, definitely, uh, there are hierarchies of serving that. First and foremost, you have a, a discussion or try to resolve it with your line manager. If it is not uh, resolvable, you move to the next hierarchy. Maybe another uh, uh, senior management try to intervene in terms of resolving the conflict between both of you. If uh, the uh, higher hierarchy is not able, then he move to uh, another hierarchy above him, or he can move to the HR department where they try to self settle it as a kind of now uh, an independent objective uh, 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 mechanism. That is when it comes to now dispute and conflict uh, uh, within the workplace. But now when it becomes now a bigger one, which is of course, uh, uh, conflict between uh, uh, and uh, these mechanisms are written in the uh, university policy, uh, the hierarchies of uh, resolving a dispute, which is of course a conflict. At UJ we have it, the hierarchies you will go, first of all you discuss. Am I breaking? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. I think the uh, background noise is coming. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. I don't know okay. about colleagues, but I can. Colleagues, can you all hear me? Yes, yes Prof. Prof. I can hear you. Yes, Prof, we can. Oh, oh, okay. So in some institutions, like in my institution, there are those uh, uh, written policies, the approaches, the stages, where you can go with regards to your conflict and conflict is also dispute, you know, in terms of resolving a, a dispute, which is part of all 
the employment relation approach uh, to solving problem within organization. But now when the conflict becomes now a kind of a bigger conflict in form of uh, a kind of uh, 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 labor union, uh, which include employees uh, now against uh, the management or against an organization. This, uh, of course, uh, requires, uh, of course, uh, certain rules, uh, which uh, have also been stipulated by the law of the country. There are so many rules that stipulate in terms of how uh, strike action should be undertaken by striking workers. There are rules to follow, otherwise it will become an illegal strike. I think those are the rules normally they follow. Also, the same thing applies to organization if they want to lock out. There are rules that they have, follow, they have to follow. First of all, see possibility of a dialogue and uh, meet the workers. And if uh, those things are not working, then you can, uh, of course, uh, lock out, you know. So internally, certain organizations have the rules, uh, stages that you have to follow in resolving dispute or conflict in an organization, uh, depending from organization to organization. And of course, if it is not in your organization, maybe you can suggest such kind of uh, rules, the mechanisms of resolving a dispute internally or conflict internally in your organization. Then that makes you a change agent in that organization uh, in terms of bringing of ways uh, people can of course resolve internal crisis. And of course, like uh, issues of conflict also, uh, which of course uh, include uh, sexual harassment. Uh, sexual harassment can of course also become a uh, conflict issue when uh, the person you want to harass is not, uh, you are showing some advancement is not agreeing and he decided to take up the matter. There are also policies covering uh, such, such a harassment in organizations. Uh, but now when it becomes now a kind of a bigger conflict, inter-organizational conflict or conflict between the parties, uh, which is now a, the bigger United Labour uh, movement, then there are also uh, instances and of course introduction of an in, uh, independent uh, 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 arbitrator, mediator, and conciliators. So all those things are also uh, uh, contained in uh, 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 the rules. Uh, if there is of course a collective bargaining uh, between the organization and of course uh, the labor union, those things will contain will be contained in the collective agreement, uh, what are the procedures and the processes in terms of uh, resolving conflict, uh, which is all purple, uh, uh, areas or purposes of a conflict uh, resolution, can you see? But of course, individual managers have different approaches to resolving conflict, and at, le at least we have discussed some of the approaches uh, to resolving a conflict in organizations. Very clear. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah, it, it okay. just makes sense. I, I, I picked up um, various dynamics, including structure. You can go through structures. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, colleagues, uh, let's touch now on communication. 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 The function is actually transference and understanding of meaning. Communication is the transference and understanding of meaning. That is somebody transfers information and you make meaning out of that information or out of what is communicated. Can you see? And in communication, we have the communicator, which is the person transferring information. And we have the communicative, which is the person receiving information. Can you see? So what are the functions of communication? The following are the functions of communication. The first one there is, of course, control members' behavior. Communication can be used to control members' behavior. Another function of communication is communication fosters motivation for what is to be done. It motivates people. It can be used to motivate people in terms of what should be done. Another communication function is provide a release for emotional expression. Communication provide a release for emotional expression. Let me see. 
Another function of communication is communication provide information needed to make decision. I see, provide information needed to make a decision. Communication processes. What are the processes of communication? The step between the source of communication, the step between the source, that is the, communicate, the communicator, and the receiver or a receiver, which is the communicator, that result in the transference and understanding of meaning. Can you see? And also keep it in mind that between this network of transferring information from the communicator and the communicator, there could be distortion. There could be challenges in understanding the information that has been transferred, which is what that diagram is actually showing in terms of the sender, uh, that is the communicator. First of all, the message to be sent. He prepares the message to, the, to be sent to the receiver. And after preparing the message to be sent, the message is encoded. He passes the message, encode the message, and of course, send it to the China. So, of course, the receiver. And know that in between the China, there's what they call barriers. There are certain barriers that could be in between the receiver and, of course, uh, the sender which is sometimes referred to as noise in terms of communication. Then of course, uh, through the channel, the receiver received the message. Then the receiver now try to apprehend or decode what the message is talking about. So depending on how the message has been distorted or the, the, the level of barriers uh, that have affected the message, the receiver may get a wrong information. But of course, depending on the channel also, the receiver may get the right information. And the information the receiver receives will inform the feedback that the receiver will send to the sender, the message sender. So if the message is distorted, definitely the feedback will be also erroneous. Or uh, if the message is not properly decoded, the feedback may not reflect what the sender actually was uh, expecting. So those are just uh, the communication process, all right? Key part of communication process, the first one there is the sender, which is of course the communicator who initiate the message that he is sending to the receiver, uh, which is the communicator. Then of course the sender will encode, encode uh, uh, the decision. That is translating thought to message. That is making the message more understandable, more clearer to the receiver. Now, of course, the message is what is communicated. That is what is said. And of course, this message passed through China. China is the medium the message travels through from the, from the sender to the receiver. Then, of course, decoding the receiver's actually making sense of the message is called decoding of the message. Then of course the receiver, uh, person who gets the message is the receiver or the communicator. Then definitely we have noise in between the, the sender and the receiver. That is things that interfere with the message, barriers to the message. And of course feedback is sent, which is return message regarding the initial message or regarding the initial communication uh, that was sent to the receiver. Communication China. What are the different communication China? The medium selected by the sender through which the message traveled to the receiver is the communication China. And we have various type of China. We have the former China, Former China are established by the organization and transmit message that are related to the professional activities of members. Can you see? And of course, we have informal China of communication, which of course used to transmit personal or social messages in the organization. These informal China are spontaneous 
and of course, emerge as a response to individual choices, can you see? So something like rumors falls under the informal message or something like grapevines falls under the informal message, can you see? So we have formal China of communication and of course, informal China of communication. Direction of communication. Communication can go either in the upward direction, that is a communication between a junior colleague or communication between the junior manager to the CEO or communication uh, between subordinates to managers. Or communication can go, of course, uh, from uh, downward, which is from the CEO down to the VP, down to the manager, down to the supervisors, and of course, down to the subordinate. Can you see? So communication can be in the upward wing or downward wing. And of course, communication can also have a literal uh, effect, a communication going side by side. You can see the arrow there now, the VP communicating to another VP. That is a good example of literal communication or what is also known as horizontal communication. Can you see? The communication is flowing from the same level of management to the same level of management. So there's no up and down hierarchy in terms of the flow of information or communication in this in the case of a letter uh, communication or of course a horizontal communication. All right. Now interpersonal communication. The different forms of interpersonal communication include oral communication. Oral communication is normal verbal communication, what we verbalize when we speak to one another. That is oral communication. And what are the advantages of oral communication? Advantages include speed and of course feedback. You communicate orally and you get feedback immediately. However, the disadvantage is that distortion of the message through numbers because Oral communication, you are talking continuously. Well, there's no time to sit down to apprehend what the other person is talking. So uh, 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 you give feedback immediately. So there could be instances of distortion of the message through numbers of communication, numbers of what you are talking orally. And of course, we have, of course, another one, written communication. Written communication is when you write now to the other person, to do this, that, 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 and it goes to the other person. Then the person is not talking orally, the person takes time to read, and of course decode what you have instructed. So advantage of a written communication is that tangible, it is tangible and verifiable. And you see, you can keep a record of it. And also another thing with regards to oral communication is that you can deny certain things when it comes to oral communication. That is why sometimes they say, if you really want to foment troubles, don't use written communication because what is written cannot be deleted or cannot be forgotten. Can you see? For instance, if you want to insult a colleague and you write it, it's an evidence against you. <laughs> Can you see? But if you want to have an altercation with a colleague and you call him on phone, guys, this, that, 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 you did this, you did this, you are stupid. Then nobody has the written format and you can deny, you know, if, if, if the management did not go to the length of going to the network by, for instance, going to MTC in Namibia to verify what was said and what was not said. Can you see? That is our communication. Or even particularly if there's no record and you meet the person face to face and you had an argument, you insult, if the guy decides to take you off somewhere, you can say, no, I did not say so. I did not say that. Or oh, that was not what I meant. Can you see? That is our uh, communication. But with regards to written communication, what you have written, either through test or through note or your handwriting cannot be deleted. Can you see? So disadvantages is that, of course, written communication is time consuming and of course, lacks feedback. Can you see? It's time consuming and of course, lacks feedback. Feedback is not often. 
And of course, with regards to interpersonal communication, we have also what they call non-verbal communication. Non-verbal communication. And the advantages of non-verbal communication is that it supports other communication and provides observable expression of emotions and feeling. You see. So, and of course, uh, disadvantage of that is misperception of body language and gestures can influence receiver's interpretation. And I was giving you, I think uh, sometime back, I was giving you an instance of India that when Indians want to agree with you, they, they nod their head side by side. And when an African wants to agree with you, they nod their head up and down. Can you see, this is an instance of a body gesture. And of course, if you remember during, of course, uh, the time of uh, the funeral of uh, Nelson Mandela at the National, at the uh, FMB Stadium in Soweto, the guy that was giving inter interpretation, in fact, people said they don't know what he was talking about, even those who know sign language. So misperception of body language and gestures can influence receiver's interpretation of a message. All right. The message is, I agree. For instance, a message can be confusing in this format. I agree to the conceptual modeling approach. But as stated on various occasions, I'm not comfortable with it. You see. So you agree with it, but you are not comfortable with it. It's a kind of a message uh, to someone, and a message that carries two implications. Yeah, you agree that the approach is good, but you are not comfortable with it. All right. This is a very good example of a message that can, of course, be distorted, you know, uh, to a certain uh, level. Now, no verbal communication, which, of course, uh, include body movement, unconscious motion that provide meaning, you see. Unconscious notion, motion that provide meaning shows extent of interest in another and relative perceived status different. Another non-verbal communication is intonations and voice emphasis. The way something is said can change meaning. You see. The way something is said can change meaning. And of course, facial expression show emotion, you see, with regards to non-verbal. Uh, 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 communication. And of course, physical distance between sender and of course receiver depend on cultural norms and of course can express interest or statue. Physical distance can of course also uh, uh, be uh, kind of uh, 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 can have an impact in terms of uh, what uh, is communicated between the sender and of course the receiver. Three common former small group network uh, with regards to communication. And I know you have come across this also when we dealt with the topic of team and of course group. Can you see? And of course, we have, uh, of course, uh, in terms of the network, we have the chain, which is rigidly, rigidly follows the chain of command. Can you see? Everybody follow the chain of command and somebody at the top. And of course, we have uh, uh, the wheel. The wheel rely on central figure to act as the conduit of all communication. Can you see? Uh, for instance, uh, you can see uh, the central fig uh, figure there. He communicates with everyone, and everyone seems to uh, uh, relate with him. But in terms of chain, you can see that one person relates to another, and the other relates to another, and the other relates to the top. So that could be a kind of hierarchy. But in terms of the will, he relates to everyone. Rely on, everyone rely on central figure to act as the conduit for all communication. A team with a stronger leader. That is a, a good example is a team with a stronger leader. And of course, all China, we have come across this also, all group members communicate actively with each other. Such diagram, that diagram is a good example of self-managed team, which you have come across when we dealt with a team, when we dealt with the topic of team. All right. 
small, so small group network effectiveness. Small group effectiveness depends on the desired outcome variables. Let me say, small group effectiveness depends on the desired outcome variable, types of network, uh, and of course, uh, with regards to criteria. When it comes to uh, speed, uh, the chain network is more moderate in terms of speed, while the wheel network is faster, uh, very fast. And of course, all chain, all chain uh, are also, uh, is also very fast. When it comes to accuracy, the chain is more accurate, very accurate. Accuracy is high. The type of network is, of course, uh, 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 with regards to that, uh, the wheel. The wheel also accuracy is high. While all chain accuracy is uh, moderate. When it comes to emergency of a leader, uh, with regards to communication, uh, the chain is, of course, uh, moderate. While the wheel is high. And of course, all chain. Uh, it's not, there is uh, uh, no, uh, uh, it doesn't reflect any uh, issues with regards to emergency. Now, when it comes to member satisfaction, the chain uh, network is of course moderate, the wheel is low, and of course, all chain is high, all right? So that is of course a criteria. And of course, on the basis of this criteria, we should of course know uh, the outcome of uh, some of the communication uh, that we can also use within our organizations. All right. Now we'll come to the next aspect of communication, which is of course an informal communication, which is grapevine. Grapevine is the same thing as rumor. Rumor, can you see? When people begin to rumor, you know, a rumor is spread through secrecy and uh, they, they, you hear it at the corridors, you know. Three main grapevine characteristics. Grapevine character, one is that it is informal and not controlled by management. Rumor is not controlled by management. It is informal. Rumor is perceived by most employees as being more believable and reliable than formal communication. You see, rumor is perceived by most employees as being more believable and reliable than formal communication. Rumor is largely used to serve the self-interest of those who use it. You see, are you used to serve the self-interest of those who use it? Rumors uh, result of rumor result from desire for information about important situation condition that cause anxiety. For instance, if the organization is about to embark on a reorganization or the organization is about to engage on a kind of measure, an acquisition, there'll be room on everywhere that certain employees may be retrenched or certain employees may be downsized. So management have to be more transparent about such kind of information in order to actually reduce rumors. So rumors stem from desire for information about important situations. So people, even somebody can just generate a rumor and it just starts from one person to the other. It may not be true, but it becomes a rumor and becomes something that is influencing people within organization. Rumors are of course insightful to managers, can you see? Uh, it creates a bad image of uh, uh, certain managers also. So managers should, of, of course, be very, very uh, cautious of rumor, which is why managers should always speak to their employees to demystify any instances of rumor in the organization. Rumor serve employee social needs, can you see? For instance, rumors also spread when employees after we we'll go to Shabiz to drink or go for other social gatherings, so certain things happening in the organization uh, can now become a source of uh, uh, rumors or grapevines where people discuss certain things, whether true or not, it becomes a source of uh, communication and a source of information. You can see the diagram there to see how rumors start. Can you see? I said, lady collecting something from the drawer of the organization. 
And you can see now uh, what the guy is uh, asking. He said, did you hear about, and he said, did you hear about, that is how rumors start. And he said, did you hear, did you hear, or did you know, or have you had, or had a, it's a big gist in the organization. And you see, those rumors uh, can start breeding or rumors can start in an organization. All right. Reducing rumors in an organization, the first thing that in terms of reducing is an unsustainable for making important decisions. An unsustainable by telling an employee, I will see you on this so, 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 day for us to talk about and take the decision. Another way of producing rumors is of course, explain decisions and behavior that appear inconsistent or secret. Now you see, explain it to them, even if it is a case of retrenchment, explain it to them because that way, to a certain extent, calm them down. And those who may have opportunity to look for job elsewhere, if retrenchment, they can start the effort on time, can you see? So explain the decision and behaviors that may appear inconsistent or security. And number three is emphasize the downside as well as the upside of current decision and future plans. They let them know, tell them the disadvantage, the demerit, as well as the demerit of the decision that and that is possibility. Openly discuss worst case scenarios, can you see? They are almost never as anxiety provo provoking as the unspoken fantasies. Can you see? When you discuss worst case possibility, they are almost never as anxiety provoking as the unspoken fantasy that, that you want to create, can you see? So those are uh, the four ways you can, remove, uh, you can reduce a uh, rumor in the workplace. Now we'll come to the next communication uh, uh, China, which is of course uh, electronic communication. And of course, you can see now, in fact, as I'm giving now this instruction, I'm communicating to you electronically, which is one aspect of electronic communication. And in fact, electronic communication has blows on a metamorphosis within the period of COVID-19, where we started since the Chinese of interaction. In fact, before we used to have about two, which was uh, Skype and one other one, uh, which we use for video uh, Skype and video conferencing. But you will agree with me that today we have sophisticated ele electronic communication China that have surpassed Skype and of course video conferencing. The Zoom, the team, the Google Meet, and so many others, the Blackboard of UJ, and of course, so many, so many others, you know, means of communicating electronically. I remember in 2012, I had a section between my student and student from uh, one of the universities in the US. Uh, actually, it was uh, one of the lecturer in US that approached me and said he would like to know more on uh, development in South Africa, uh, if uh, we can actually arrange a kind of a class session uh, between my students and their students in the US. And I was able to arrange that uh, through our IT. So it was now like a video conferencing. And of course, you know, my IT was able to arrange a big, uh, uh, a big uh, board, you know, where we can see every we were all in the same class, those in America and we in South Africa, you know. So it was a video conferencing uh, which was uh, organized and uh, we felt really uh, fascinated. But today now we have seen so many ways. In fact, that video conferencing was of course organized by my IT, which was a special thing. You can now see that we can communicate easily, anyhow, as we like it, to so many communication uh, avenues. Uh, that have actually uh, 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 spring up uh, since the COVID-19. For instance, if I want to speak to you now on Zoom, I can just send you uh, a Zoom uh, ID and tell you, please join me, let's have a conversation. 
So these are new things that we are really experiencing uh, in recent time. So electronic communication will certainly, of course, include emails. And see, and what are the advantages of emails? Uh, emails are quickly written, sent, and stored. And of course, emails are low cost to go. However, some of the disadvantages of emails is that messages are easily and commonly interpreted. And see, some people may not be very good in expressing themselves. Some people may write rudely. Some people may write without courtesy, you know. Some people may write without kindness, you know, making the other person or the receiver to feel that, no, this person is undermining me. So not email and disadvantage is not appropriate for sending negative messages, you see. So avoid sending negative messages through emails. Another disadvantage is overuse and overloading of reader to emails. And you see, overuse. If somebody is working and every minute you are sending email from, from you know, some, some laptop used to always give you that signal that an email has come. And then, uh, tum, tum, uh, taram, taram. You will lose focus. Most especially if your activity has to do with using your intelligence. And you see, so of course, remove inhabitations. Remove inhabitants and can cause emotional responses and flaming. And see, it can cause emotional responses and flaming to the extent that you have, you may start explaining yourself. And you see, you may start explaining yourself to say, no, this is what I actually intend to say. And you see, so and of course. Difficult to get emotional state understood. Email is difficult to get the emotion of the person that is talking from the other side. And it's emotion. And of course, uh, non private email can also be sometimes non private. Some institutions monitor your conversation. And you see, so email is often a made forward to anyone. And you see. It may can fall there to anyone. And that can, of course, put one in trouble. And you see. So, what to discuss in your email, particularly when it is an official email. And, you see. and of course, that also ties to WhatsApp. <clears throat> I was actually advising people just to be careful how to send WhatsApp. Because the WhatsApp at times give us a kind of an impression that it is a co conversation between two individuals. But you must know that there is a third party in terms of that connectivity, whether you like it or not. There is somebody connecting it, there is somebody who is in charge of that connectivity. There is somebody who follows up. And of course, in terms of machine learning, if you want to type what you have written before, it will help you to type it immediately. That at least tell you that this conversation is not really only to individuals. So mind what you communicate through WhatsApp. Can you see? Because of course it can be leaked. Just like sometime by one of the ministers here, uh, his conversation with a lady was leaked. Presenting us, of course, his nakedness. Can you see? In the, pub, in the public domain. And of course, some people say, uh, of course, uh, it was the lady that leaked it. Some say that, of course, uh, uh, in fact, the minister himself say he was the message was actually intended for his wife and not a girlfriend. Okay, you see, so one should be very, very careful what to, what to exchange on WhatsApp. Okay. That is why, even in my own instance. Conversation is becoming too uh, sensitive. On what I switch, I call you straight. Manual conversation. Can you see? So that in fact, there's not a party. Uh, if we're having an argument or issue on WhatsApp, I just call you straight uh, so that there's no record of uh, 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 malice uh, between uh, any one of us. Or so that, of course, somebody may not be picking uh, also our conversation. So mind what you discuss in some of the social media uh, uh, environment 
or forum. All right. So electronic communication, another aspect is instant stroke test message. So I have some emails spoken about also data. Forms of written communication of short message that often use portable communication devices, you see, which is urgent. Call me, for instance. Explosive growth in business use. Electronic communication, instant test messages, which come, of course, through your phone also. Explosive growth in business, it is used in business, fast, inexpensive means of communication. Can be intrusive, intrusive, intrusiveness. In fact, one thing about WhatsApp also is intrusiveness. That is why for, some, for so many uh, uh, years, I did not join the WhatsApp group of my department. It's just of recent that I decided, okay, reluctantly join. I don't like intrusive messages, can you see? When you are doing another thing, there is a message coming, or uh, message coming, Tim. That is why I don't like joining group, group WhatsApp. Some people set up group and they just throw your name. And once I see my name in those kind of group, I delete my name if that group is not beneficial. Because you may join a group where some people are idle individuals. They don't have anything doing. Every minute they are throwing message and that, that noise alone, you, know, you will be curious. What are they sending? So it can be intrusive and distracting. If you are the kind of person that want to write uh, some academic material and the emails are coming, even if you have put it on silent mode, by vibration so that you know that's a, you look who is this? Something has left your mind. The another one is quite intrusive. And of course, easily hacked with, with weak security, you see? Easily hacked. It can be easily hacked. Like I spoke to you, what you speak on WhatsApp can be easily hacked. And, you see, and let me tell you also, I think I have experienced that cyber, what, what is referred to as cyber bullying. And you see, some fraudulent individuals that go around looking at people they perceive as. Uh, 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 achievers or people they perceive as uh, they may be able to pay when we threaten them. They can hack your conversation in most of these social medias and of course begin to use that conversation to threaten you. If it is a beautiful conversation between you and another lady outside, they can tell you, okay, this message you get to your wife. <laughs> Uh, this message you get to your husband. <laughs> if, of course, you are the first one that is also playing some games. <laughs> yeah, you see. So you can that can become a source of scandal. And you see, you can be scandalized by most of these people telling you to pay some money into. Uh, in fact, we have now uh, many sources like the Bitcoin and, of course, some of the uh, new uh, money uh, paying. Uh, 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 avenues, you know, it can threaten you. So it can be easily hacked by someone which, if there's weak security. And of course, can be seen as too informal. Can you see? Uh, such kind of conversation can be seen as too informal, you know, not departing from a kind of work environment. Yeah. Because I, I also do know it can become informal for me also who is a lecturer. Some of the students who have my contact assign some of my research students. Sometimes at times contact me in the midnight and one day I just keep quiet. <laughs> that is how I must sleep. You see, maybe when they're struggling to get an idea, then I'll call them in the morning and say, hell, oh, I saw your missed call. You see, so it becomes so informal where people just intrude into your, you know, into your resting time or into your private time, you know, because of such kind of uh, 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 communication uh, avenues, can you see? So instant messaging, which is of course immediate email sent to receive fast desktop or device. And of course, these are uh, done through instant messaging, test message, 
short messages typically sent to cell phone and other handheld devices. These two are examples of electronic communication when it comes to instant uh, messaging and of course, uh, text uh, messaging. Electronic communication continues. Networking software. Networking software uh, is a kind of a link system organically spread throughout the nation or world that can be accessed by PC, which is of course almost similar to video conferencing uh, that can link people from different regions. There are companies that are multinational companies. Long time ago, they have been communicating and doing business through, of course, uh, video conferencing and of course through Skype and other things where people are connected to a network. You see, which is of course, and of course, networking software include social networks like MySpace, or of course, social network like Facebook, or professional network network like Zoom, Zoom Inform, uh, Zoom Inform. You see, Zoom Inform. And if you look at that, is to say that to a certain extent, even Zoom has been in existence because if you look at this slide, this slide was actually uh, 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 produced uh, in 2009, and they were able to give at least a clue about Zoom. So we cannot just say Zoom started immediately after the COVID-19. There is something almost similar to that. And of course, professional network like Zig, Zigs. And of course, uh, it also includes networking software, also include corporate networks such as IBM's Blue Badges. You see. So key point, these are public spaces. Anyone can see what you post. Can be used for job application screening. So avoid overestimating your contacts. You see, avoid, sorry, avoid overstimulating your contacts. So mind what you post, you know, this kind of uh, uh, social network or like Facebook, can you see? Some people can pay for, paste funny things, funny statements on, tes, uh, on Facebook. And when they are doing a kind of uh, 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 review of, of your application for a job uh, application, or when they are trying to make a kind of inquiry test, some people can even go to your Facebook Maybe and see your behavior, your character, what you post on Facebook, whether you are insulting, whether you are just uh, unethical in behavior and so many things. So mind what you post on social media also. All right. Electronic communication continues. Blog, blogs and video conferencing. I have spoken a lot about video conferencing. Now, when it comes to blogs, websites about a single person or entity that are typically updated daily. There are people they call bloggers, and you see. And uh, 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 that is a popular but potentially dangerous activity. It's popular, but sometimes potentially dangerous. Employees may post harmful information. You may post harmful information that can harm you. Such comment may be caused for dismissal, such kind of comments, you see. For instance, if you post uh, uh, information that of course uh, 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 portray your, manage, uh, your manager der derogatively, definitely it can become a source of uh, 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 this narrow hearing and of course dismissal. Of course, can be against complaint policy to post. Some complaint, it could be against their policy to post in blog during complaint time or on complaint equipment to connection, you see. So some people still do that social media activities from the complaints gadget, the laptop, the complaints laptop, and of course a post. So some complaints are against that uh, in terms of their policy. So another aspect is video conferencing. Video conferences uses audio, video, internet, streaming to create visual meetings. I have spoken about that extensively. Now uses, now uses, I think, uh, I think the network is breaking again now. Are you guys still with me? 
Yes. Are you guys still with Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, uh, now uses inexpensive webcam and laptop in places of formal video conferencing room. Now, there is now a new use of inexpensive webcams and, of course, uh, laptops in places of uh, video conferencing. All right. Because video conferencing naturally bring people together in a place, then they will have an interaction with the other group somewhere. But now, because everyone of us now, laptop has now resolved that, where you can be in the comfort of your study or you're in the comfort of your office, and of course, join the meeting anywhere across the globe. Can you see it? All right. Choice of communication China. What are the choices? Uh, choice of communication China. The model, uh, the model of media richness help in an individual choice of communication uh, China. Uh, when the, the, the media richness, how rich the media is to a particular communication support uh, the choice of communication uh, uh, richness. China vary in their capacity to convey information. A rich China is one that can handle multiple cues simultaneously, facilitate rapid feedback, and of course, be very personal. Can you see? Then of course, a choice depends on whether the message is routine, whether the message is routine, or whether high-performing manager tend to be very media sensitive. There are instances where high-performing manager want to be media sensitive. All right. So media richness in terms of communication, uh, you can see uh, 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 low China richness, formal report, bulletins, memos, letters, all this come under low China richness. And of course, uh, the pre-recording speeches, and of course, electronic mails uh, also falls under low China richness. And of course, online discussion, group, uh, uh, group, group words, and of course, voice base, of course, is moderate in between low and of course, high China richness. And of course, live speeches, telephone conversation, uh, move into the high China richness. And of course, video conferencing, and of course, face-to-face -face conversation uh, is of course, uh, within the high China richness with regards to media richness and uh, communication. All right. Hello? You have a question? All right. Barriers to effective communication. What are the barriers, the different barriers to effective communication? The first one is, of course, a filtering barrier. That is a filtering barrier, of course, when is sender's manipulation of information. When a sender's manipulation of information so that it will be seen more favorably by the receiver. Uh, that is when the sender manipulates information. When the sender manipulates information or a sender's manipulation of information so that it will be seen more favorable by the receiver. That is what they call filtering barrier. And of course, we have another barrier to effective communication, which is selective perception. We have come across selective perception when we spoke about perception and decision making, individual decision making. So people selectively interpret what they see on the basis of their interests, background, experience, and attitude. We have also alluded to that. That can also be a barrier to communi effective communication. And of course, another barrier is information overload. Can you see? A condition in which information inflow exceeds an individual's capacity to process such information. That information, information becomes explosive and overload. And of course, particularly within the current era of globalization and the fourth industrial revolution, we are in an information age. So of course, we must know the information that we are selecting. Otherwise, we will be having an information overload or an information explosion, which of course can send us nowhere. 
or put us in a state of confusion. So that can be a barrier to effective communication. Another aspect is emotion. Emotions can be a barrier to effective communication. How a receiver feels at the time a message is received will influence how the message is interpreted. For instance, if a receiver receives an information that the, mommy has, the mother has passed away, definitely the mental, process, the mental way of processing such information may be different when he receives an information that he has won the lottery. Can you see? So emotion, how a receiver feels at the time the message is received will influence how the message is interpreted. More barriers to effective information, uh, effective communication, language. Words have different meaning to different people. Can you see? There are certain words that you use and it will have different meaning. Like in South Africa, in South Africa, if somebody is saying, oh, shame, he's just being empathetic towards you. But in Nigeria, if somebody is saying shame, it's an insult. It's like he's telling you shame on you. <laughs> you see, so language can, of course, be a kind of a, a barriers to communication. Can you see? So language. In Nigeria, shame can mean an insult. But in South Africa, oh, shame can be somebody empathizing with you. Can you see? Then, of course, uh, communication apprehension. Undue tension and anxiety about oral communication. Written communication or both, you know, when there's tension, when there's already an anxiety, uh, that is of course apprehension, communication apprehension. Gender differences, men tend to talk, to emphasize touching, while women talk to create connection. And you see, men talk like boss, but women talk for more relationship, better relationship, connectedness, all right. Summary and managerial implication. The less employees are uncertain, the greater their satisfaction. The less employees are uncertain about events, the, the, better, the greater the satisfaction. That is to say, we must not allow rumors and grapevine to be spreading. We must create a kind of an environment of certainty by disclosure. Good communication reduces uncertainty. And you see, communication is improved by choosing the correct channel of communication. And of course, a communicator must, must also be a good listener. And you see, and of course, the communicator must utilize the feedback received from the communicative or the receiver. So potential for misunderstanding in electronic communication is higher than traditional mode, the potential for misunderstanding in electronic communication is higher than the traditional mode. There are many barriers to international communication that must be overcome. Now go and get your point across. Can you see? You can see the, the diagram that the guy said, need cash for alcohol research. <laughs> All right, colleagues, with that, we come to an end with uh, our uh, discussion for today. Let me go and uh, start rushing to my section where I'm uh, delivering uh, another uh, a paper uh, in the conference. All right. Thank you, Prof. All the best. Thanks a lot. Thanks a Thank lot. You, I, hope every, I hope everybody is happy. Yes, we, we are, are happy. Fantastic. Uh, please, uh, uh, like I said, you should select uh, your team, a team of three individuals. And in fact, I would want, I would want you to choose a leader among your team. And the team leader will be the person that will be communicating to me uh, with regards to uh, in fact, sending the name of the team. Uh, you see, you choose your leader, the person will be the person to send me the name of the team. Uh, because uh, in the course of the week, uh, definitely I will release the assignment, uh, your research assignment, so that you start working on that. Uh, then possibly I will also release an uh, individual assignment, uh, probably before Friday, uh, uh, so that you guys can, of course, start working on that. And uh, there could be instances where 
uh, I may also recommend for a group activity in, in, the, in the class, uh, who should be a kind of, uh, a kind of a constituting a, uh, a quick meeting for us to uh, do some uh, class activity. It could be in the form of a debate, a debate where the class can be divided into two, uh, with some group in one group and other uh, that we can also uh, stimulate a topic which we can, of, of course, uh, discuss and learn from one another in terms of what we uh, think or where we stand in such kind of arguments or debates. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend, Koda. What time yourself. are we starting tomorrow morning, Prof? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock again. All right. Yes. I know that I will be coming back from this function today by, say, 10 o'clock in the night. But 8 o'clock, I will be working up to meet you guys. Don't worry. No problem. OK. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful weekend for that. Thank you. Bye, Bob. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you also, Prof. Bye-bye. Bye, colleagues. Bye-bye.